welcome back to Cape May County Zoo Zoo School. I'm Lauren, I'm a keeper here at the zoo, and today I'm gonna to show you our porcupine training and talk to you a little about our boys, who are brothers, they're 11 years old. If you can see them right here, this is Don Prickles, and right next to him is his brother, Quilber. So Don Prickles, we can tell them apart on a few different ways, but Don you has more white in his mohawk, and Quilber doesn't. When I train them, they're also know, they also know that Don always trains on the left, and Quilber always trains on the right. You can see that they're getting a little anxious because they really enjoy their training. So I'll show you right now what they know. These guys are African crested porcupines. Don, up. Good. Um, they are from uh, South Africa. They live in pairs. They live in a male and a female pair. They spend their um, nights and bur uh, burrowing into um, mud and dirt to create their caves that they spend their days in because they are nocturnal animals. Quill bird. Don target. Good. Good job. They, um, they all will also live with their kids. In. Quilber up. Good. Hold. Good. Don target. Good. If you can get close in his nails, you can see that his nails are really short. Quilber is the digger of the two. He digs the holes here. Good. Let me try to get Don Prickles up because you'll see that Don's nails are much larger than Quilber's. Don up. Quill target. If you can get in on his nails, you see there. Oh, let me see. Don up. Quilber target. Yay, good. Porcupines are nocturnal, so sometimes they'll. Um, have a hard time seeing the target stick and so I use the sound to get them to readjust target good Clover up they also know touch so that if we ever had to trim their nails that we're able to trim them easily without them stressing out we are not able to grab our porcupines up because they are um, a protected contact species. We don't go in with them. So training allows us to be able to, to uh, work with them and do behaviors without having to knock them out. Don Prickles up. Come on. Here, he's gonna go up. Clover. Thank you. Don. You're so bad. Good job. Don up. Come on. Good. You see his nails are much longer. Touch. Good. This is still a new behavior, so every time we do it, I'm gonna be rewarding them because we're still working on it. Um, as you can tell, they're very anxious for uh, their training session. They really enjoy them. Uh, they get grapes, which they usually have in their diet because porcupines are herbivores. So they usually eat root vegetables like turnips and um, beets. They'll also have some sweet potatoes. But for training, we want them to be really interested in it. So they'll get some um, grapes, which is our favorite. Sometimes they get strawberries uh, or peanuts. They do enjoy peanuts for training. Okay, so you got to uh, see their training sessions, which they do sometimes daily. Uh, we try to keep them interacted with on a uh, regular basis. But right now you can see them in their yard. Like we were talking about, they are nocturnal. So when you come to the zoo, they might be sleeping, they might be laying in their log that they enjoy. Um, but right now they're actually pretty active um, and they are play fighting because they the sun came out and they're enjoying it. Um, so what we uh, wanted to show you was possibly their way of how they keep predators away. They're not easy prey because of their quills, um, but they cannot shoot them. What they can do is they can uh, run backwards at a very fast speed, as you can see his quills are up. Um, and they are known to take down lions. Um, they are known to take down humans as well, just the way that their quills uh, puncture. So they have a lot of warning signs before they do run backwards. Porcupines will stomp their feet. 
um, then they will raise their quills. They might even shake their tail a little bit. They'll try to get your attention. And then they run backwards and stick like you just saw. They won't hurt each other at this point. They're just kind of creating distance. Um, but for a real predator, they would do some damage. Um, they are African crested porcupines. So they're, from, they're also called Cape porcupines. As I stated earlier, they're from South Africa. So they have a really large range and they have a lot of different predators. Um, those would be leopards, uh, cheetahs, lions, any type of large prey or predator. Um, but they are the largest species of porcupines. They are much larger than the North American porcupine or the prehensile tail porcupine. Our challenge for you is for um, you to do your best mohawk in an impression of our two porcupine boys that we here uh, have on exhibit at the zoo. And don't forget to hashtag it with the hashtag CMC Zoo School. And here we are with Hank. Hank is also an African crested porcupine. He is one of our education ambassadors here at the Cape May Zoo. The African crested porcupine is also known as the Cape porcupine, which is really fun because we are here in Cape May. Uh, so he's a great ambassador for us in the education department. Hank was born on September 11th and he will be two years old this year. Uh, we did get Hank uh, from the Kohansik Zoo when he was just a porcupet. He was actually only six days old and we were able to hand raise him um, and bottle feed him, which gave us a connection um, to him to be able to work with him and handle him um, and work on training behaviors to make him a great ambassador animal for his species. Now Lauren talked to you um, about their quills. So quills are actually just modified hairs. They are made of keratin, the same thing as your hair and your fingernails are made of. Um, so they do not shoot these quills. They actually just shed these quills, um, just like when you're brushing your hair and some hair comes out in the hairbrush, uh, and then they do re grow back. So like Lauren explained, they will back up into a predator. Um, those quills will impale the predator and some will fall off and be left behind. Now porcupines have several different kinds of quills. You see the longer ones on the back? Those are kind of sensors. They're really thin um, and they kind of are like little feelers that help him know where he's going when he has them raised. And then there are the fixed center ones and these are the weapons. So these are what are actually going to be dangerous to predators. Um, and then the ones by their tail are very hollow. I don't have any of them to show you, but um, they are hollow. And that's what the porcupine will use to shake and rattle as a warning sign uh, before they back up into that predator. These quills along his mohawk here are very fine. They almost just feel like coarse hair like we would have on our head. Um, and all of these quills um, are semi hollow. So they're just a, like a little bit porous. Hank here is eating um, some nuts as like a little enrichment for him right now. You saw on our porcupines in the zoo um, how large their teeth are. Um, they do have a very strong bite. Um, they are able to bite through these walnuts, acorns, and different shells uh, rather easily. Um, so this is good to keep his teeth trimmed down and um, also good enrichment for him. So Hank is target trained. For him, we do use this buoy, something a little bit larger and brighter because as Lauren said, they do not have great vision. Um, and so he is trained um, to come to the target stick. Right now, he's a little preoccupied with all of these nuts we gave him. Um, and again, we do use him out on programs. Uh, so hopefully, uh, we will be back out visiting your school soon.